Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at move to within the method section, uh, describing the study. Okay. Um, move to, um, as I just said, is the second move in the method section, and it is the place where you provide descriptive information about your study. Um, and to do so, it can contain information about how your data were acquired, um, description of that data, and any variables that could be included or that you might not include. Um, and it may also include information about the experimental procedures and tools that you, were, that you used, um, instruments, materials, or equipment that were used to carry out the uh, procedures, um, or anything else that you needed to do to acquire your data. Um, you may also include rationales for some or all of your um, experimental procedures, and brief statement about um, the preliminary results could also um, be included in this part of the study, or in this part of your paper. Okay, so um, given all of the very different things that can um, happen in this move, let's look at the different types of steps that are included. Uh, so we've got seven steps, um, which again, like move one, um, may or may not be present within the particular um, study that you are either reading or writing yourself. Um, so we've got um, all of these steps, um, and we're going to look through these one by one, um, like normal. Um, and with, of course, the caveat that they don't always appear in this particular order and that they can also be um, overlapping in a single sentence. Um, I'll give you a brief explanation of uh, what the step is, as well as an example of the step, and we'll, um, we'll look at all that together. Okay, um, here's our first step that we'll talk about, um, acquiring the data. And um, as it sounds like, this is um, the step functions to illustrate the process of collecting or recording your data, um, however that is um, necessary um, in your particular study. So um, oh, notice that this could be either primary or secondary data. So um, it, it can be lots of different things depending on how you did your study. But this step really describes how your data were obtained. Um, so you might have sampling issues, selecting or measuring processes that were included, and also um, what was done to your data. So things like preparing, tabulating, or estimating, um, and many other things could also be included in here. But notice that this step does not include um, the procedures, um, in your current study, so what was done step by step to cause an outcome. That well, we're going to hold on till to later. So this is just how you acquired your data. Okay, and we've got a, one example here. 24 field isolates of S uh, subterranea were obtained either from different fields or from the fam same field with samples taken over several years. Um, so again, we've got um, explanation from the authors about how they collected their data. Um, so we've got information about how the data were obtained um, in, this, in this example. Okay, our next ex uh, step here is describing the data. And this step functions to provide a detailed des uh, description of what your data are. Um, you might also use this step to elaborate on relevant characteristics. Um, so particular um, things that would be really important for the purposes of your study, and it can include physical or abstract qualities and quantities. Um, so for example, here we've got the data set provides information on a rich set of child care choices, as well as tracking parental and teacher evaluations of children's development, test scores, and class rankings. So we've got a description of all the things that are included inside this data set. And you can see that we've got um, things that could be um, more quantitative, test scores, class rankings, as well as um, more qualitative and abstract things, um, uh, the child development perhaps, um, child care choices. These things could be either quantitative or qualitative, depending on the data. Okay, our next step we're going to look at is called identifying variables. And in this, this step functions, um, as it again says, to dare, um, identify any sort of variables that would be included in your experimental conditions. Um, and so we want to 
um, within this step, we want to provide a general description of the variables used in your study, um, distinguish between the variables that were used um, and, and those that were manipulated, um, and also to show how the different variables may influence the outcome of your study. Um, and variables in the method section are designed as constant conditions, factors and conditions, factors subject to change, lots of different things, but under which the experiment occurred. So the different sorts of um, conditions, variables, um, factors that t um, were surrounding your study. So here we've got um, the dependent variables in the study were learning percentage and subjective assessment of cognitive demand, physical demand, and perceptual demand. So we've got a listing of the different types of variables, um, and so, and with also a little bit of detail about each one. Okay, our next step we're gonna look at is called describing experimental procedures. And this step is often very lengthy, um, where you outline the step-by-step -step actions that took place in your experiment. Um, so the author would describe these in order to help the audience understand um, what was done to get to the results and to illustrate how those experimental steps were actually completed. Um, these, this step is um, particularly crucial if future studies want to replicate um, your work. And so in some fields, this, this um, portion of the method section could be quite long and lengthy. Um, we have a short example here. Um, all solvents were distilled from sodium benzoyl the non kettle with the exception of et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we have an example here of the precise details of how um, the study was um, conducted. We mentioned um, in the previous um, section that sometimes there's a bit of overlap. And so this um, step is the place where you could have overlap with some of the um, uh, participant information from before. But notice that this is really looking at the step-by-step -step actions that took place. So um, it's often a listing, you know, we did this, we did this, this took place, then this took place, um, sort of section in your paper. All right. Um, the next step we're going to look at is describing uh, tools, instruments, materials, equipment. And you can see all these slashes here. Um, and this step really is um, used, as it says, to describe any of the tools, instruments, materials, or equipment um, that were necessary for your study to take place. Um, so this includes abstract materials. So we often think about all of us as being physical materials, but they could be um, other sorts of, of items. Um, the, Again, this information is very useful to other researchers who may be seeking to replicate your study um, or to um, draw on um, your study procedures. So being specific um, where possible is very important. We've got an example here, um, and we have lots of, of uh, specific information in this example. The a Medtronic Minimed Paradigm 512 insulin pump was used. Okay? Um, for, uh, to drive the flow, passing through a standard paradigm quick set infusion set. We have brand name and exact model numbers of this particular type of equipment. So if I was going to conduct a similar experiment, um, I could either use exactly the same equipment to control for that, or if I wanted to see whether that equipment made a difference, I could use different equipment and see if that made an influence. Um, but where possible, um, most fields try to be very, very specific in this area. Our next uh, step is called rationalizing experiment decisions. And um, this step functions to help justify the choices that were made um, in the experiment, including choices in your data collection, um, your data preparation, your choice of tools, um, etc. And this step really um, functions to help enable the author to connect the experiment with an overarching purpose, um, to connect the experiment to the research objectives or the research que questions guiding the study, and to indicate um, the, the reason for, the purpose for certain experimental steps. Um, so we have an example here. Uh, in order to work with a range of ionic strengths where gel transitions occur, 
the background ionic strength of the particle solutions was increased. So we have a, an explanation, a rationalization of why the authors chose to do something. And without that explanation, uh, the readers might be left wondering why the authors made a certain choice. Um, so this is really that place where you explain uh, the purpose um, for the choice that you made. Okay, our final step in this section is called reporting um, incrementals. And this step re might report your preliminary findings, the results of some observations or measurements, um, or as another way to facilitate the reader's understanding of the steps taken or the choices made in the experiment. Um, this step might help um, provide some explanation or illumination of the researcher's methods um, or justification for why a technique or a procedure was carried out. Um, so let's look at this one here. We'd see um, after two hours, um, a particular type of uh, spectroscopy indicated that a particular element was consumed and that four and this element were formed in a one-to-one -one ratio. So we have some particular results. Clearly these aren't the results that the authors are most interested in. Um, those would occur in the results section. But these results might indicate that they that, that they're um, an incremental result, that they are the result that might lead them to doing something else. Um, first we found this, so we did this next step to finally get to our results. So these incremental findings don't occur in every field, but if you had a step along the way where you had to make a decision based on some preliminary result, this is where you um, might explain that in your study. Okay. Now that we've made our way through these seven different steps within this uh, section of or this uh, move within the method section, let's look at some. Um, as always, I'll show you the um, the sentence or sentences, and I ask you to pause your video so you get a chance to fully read through the sentence and think about um, what it's functioning like, and then um, I'll talk you through the decisions that we made. Okay, so pause your video. Okay, you got a chance to read through this. Uh, we've got a couple of sentences here. And you can see here that we've got, I've highlighted some words in red for you. And I think that these are the key things to be looking at as we go through these sentences together. We have some samples um, were used as positive controls, but most samples were, um, had atypical symptoms and were subject to um, the real-time analysis in the study. Pathogen-free were used as negative controls. So here we have a description of the different types of variables that were used in this study. We've got positive controls and negative controls, the different types of variables. Okay. Our next step, take a moment to pause your video. Okay. Let's look at this together. Because we wanted to establish that retraining could affect motivation in a neutral environment before introducing possible effects of stereotype threat and motivation, participants were first given 10 minutes to complete a motivation task with no mention of math ability, testing, or gender. Okay. So here we've got um, the step functioning overall as rationalizing the experiment decisions because we want to, to establish Okay, so we get an overarching a rationalization of the experimental decisions. You can also see that there's some evidence that this step might also have some information about the study procedures. But overall, the step, uh, the sentence functions to rationalize those um, experimental decisions. Okay, here's your next step. Okay. I've highlighted in red for you here. Each isolate was prepared by the removal, okay? And here we've got um, explanation of how the data were acquired, what was done to get the data. Um, notice that we also have um, a reviewing previous research here from move one at the bottom of this, the method of um, Ku et al. 2001. So we have an example of the mixture of well, two steps, but also two moves in a single sentence. Okay, here's another step for you. 
Okay, you got a chance to look at this one? Here we have um, information that describes the tools and equipment that were used. So we've got lots of information about this strep probe, where it was manufactured, um, including the um, company and um, place. We've got also information about the different types of um, dye and um, chemicals that were used in the study. So we've got lots of um, descriptions of the materials and tools that were used. And this would be very helpful if we wanted to um, follow up on the study and look at uh, similar sorts of equipment. Okay, here's a short sentence for you. Okay, did you get a chance to read this one? We've got the three-week-old plants contained up to nine leaves. This is an example of reporting the incrementals. We've got a reporting of some findings, but the sentence is from the method section, so it's clearly not the most important finding. It's not the end of their, their paper, but this is information that helps explain what they did next. Okay, so their three-week-old plants contained up to nine leaves, and then um, something else would have been um, conducted or uh, transpired in their study. Okay, another example for you. Let's look at this one together. We've got isotopic data are reported in conventional denotation, okay, and some more information about the units. So here we have a description of the data, not um, what the data actually is, but how the data is being reported. So information about the units and measurements that is used in, um, for this data. And that is a very important thing to include um, in many different studies. Um, different measurement data, of course, could make um, entirely different outcomes. So this is an important piece to include in describing the data. All right, here's another step. Okay, in this sentence, we've got um, some important information for a study. We've got a 2.985 gram portion of potassium persulfate initiator dissolved in um, the water was then added and the reaction was allowed to proceed. Overall, this describes the study conditions, the experiment of the study conditions. Okay, so that this was allowed to describe. We all are, uh, <laughs> this was a, a, a allowed to proceed. So we've got this description of what happened in this 24-hour period. We also have a little bit that describes the tools. Um, as we can see, Fisher Scientific 99.5 purity grade, this describes the potassium um, persulfate initiator. So we have a, a short little description of the um, exact tools or materials that were used. But overall, the sentence functions to really describe the experiment um, procedures that were used. Okay, can you see how these different types of steps can interact together? Um, but we want to be looking for the main function of a sentence. That's our number one goal here. Now that we've made it through these seven steps, um, you've got a few more tasks to do yourself. Um, first, go look at that reading. That will help you look at how all these seven steps um, function and, um, to again, get more examples of what they look like and um, and, and how they interact. Um, of course, you'll have your corpus exploration tasks to do, um, and these are really important to see how the seven steps I've talked about here actually translate into your particular field. And of course, um, the quiz to check your understanding um, of what, about what you've learned from the lecture and from your reading. All right, um, next up we'll talk about move three.